Hi guys, uh, this is Vivek Singh once again. And as I had said that we will be coming back to you again and again with uh, unnoticed small concepts. And that is what we are going to do because uh, today while I was interacting on uh, one of the groups, uh, WhatsApp groups, one of the admins was a bit dejected and said that in this scenario, we are uh, basically being depressed because of this uh, repeated talks of COVID and so many uh, problems with it. So she was the opinion that if you could talk about something else, it would be nice. And I also thought so that uh, there are so many people who are discussing this. Uh, we are forgetting that life is much bigger than COVID-19. COVID-19 is like any other pandemic which has happened before also with humanity. And this too shall pass. We will suffer immense casualties and emotional losses. But humanity always survives at the end. And this will survive at the end. So I just started thinking what should I be talking about and I just thought that I let me give my two bit on the economic scenario of today and what it should be it should look like post COVID-19. So I have my in my opinion, uh, it's I'm not a great economist or something. But yes, I do have certain uh, ideas and which seem a bit different from other ideas. So now we see uh, in this scenario, now whatever economic, uh, economic scene is in any country, economic model, whatever it is followed, it is purely dependent on people of that place, how well they accept it and how well they adjust to it. If they accept it well and adjust well to it, then you have nothing like it. You have succeeded in everything and then economic model is a perfect example of a winner. But if it is not acceptable to the people at the ground level, then things become difficult. There are various other factors also. I'm not denying that. But for me, uh, at the individual level, at the lowest level where people are concerned, that is the most important part in success or failure of an economy. So let's see, uh, we were progressively moving towards a capitalist state. And the primary fundamental of any capitalist state is that free will should prevail in the market. By free will, we mean that there should be no interference with the demand and supply of goods and services. So we almost became a big economy, a very big economy, so big that every financial giant of a company or a country wanted a stake in India. And they wanted the part of this pie of capitalism because we were supposed to be the, one of the biggest consumers in the world. And that we were, we proved to be so. So what happened? Right now, when people are saying that our economy is in tailspin or it's not doing that well, what are the causes? Uh, causes may be many, that, but then I, as I said, I'll be discussing only causes at the ground level and maybe one, one cause only. So what, uh, where the problem started from, if we hypothetically or maybe if we just uh, try to see where the downspin started, it started with the step of demonetization. Now, I don't want to get into politics of it. I don't believe in politics of it. Uh, this, uh, this was an economic decision. Whether politically motivated or not, I'm not concerned with that. Whether it was good or bad, we do not know. But what it did, it changed the psyche of people of India. What was that psyche? Because capitalist model is based on the spend psyche. People spend consumerism. They just love buying things. Now what happened for one whole year, there was a shortage of supply of currency. Though it was fully restored after one year, there is no difference between uh, the period which was earlier and the period which was later to this one year. 
but people they learned few things which got deep into their psyche was that there might be shortage of currency so they should spend wisely and sometimes not only wisely they should be miserly they should not spend even on necessaries on essentials if possible this psyche led to a decrease in demand of goods and services and this decrease in demand of goods and services further led to people the the, the other end the suppliers the supplier of products and services to cut down on costs because they were finding it difficult to meet the ends so the x fell on where it always falls the manpower the manpower on an average was retrenched at the rate of sometimes 40 to 60% in industries in some of the industries it was more some industries it was less but then a lot of people were sent back to home and they had no further income now these additional people who did not have income they did not have the purchasing power so it led to a decrease in further demand of goods and services because these people could not afford it to cut down on costs again these people had to now ax the manpower once again but there is a limit to it once they were retrenched we came into the vicious cycle of unemployment where we were retrenching people till the bare essential people were left and we were doing uh, taking other measures as well now this fall could have been stopped lord kings long time back said that to come out of recession any any economy can do one thing that is it can ask its people to dig ditches and pay the money for it so that they have purchasing power to create demand and then ask them to fill those ditches again ditches again and pay them again so that they have this power once again to to increase the demand and this has been successfully implemented unfortunately in our case a government government has focused more on the supply chain so it tried to protect it it tried to promote it it tried to do a lot of things whereas we could have tried to increase the purchasing power of the people largely some measures were taken no doubt but there could have been larger measures through schemes like manrega where if people had the purchasing power maybe maybe they could have turned the tide now with covid 19 it has unsettled all the supply chains now there is some products which is sapping the sales of that because you know we are virtually locked down trains i mean say tourist industry travel everything has come to a standstill stock markets are crashing those stock markets i do not believe are largely indicative of long term uh, health of economies but still it seems that investors are worried so this is leading to a situation where overheads are continuing but there is no income there is no production there is no service provision this is going to lead to a big dent economically globally and for us from tail spin we are going to no style so what do we need to do i cannot my my voice i do not know whether it will be heard by government or not but government should focus more once again building the confidence of people who spend those are not large investors those are normal people ordinary people walking on roads every day so post this apocalypse or whatever it is called apocalypse and what we need to do is we need to focus on our lives again and we need to understand that we do not need to survive only it is not life only it is life with dignity with honor with comfort that we have to lead to be humans again so once we are over with this we should go ahead and we should look where we should need we need to spend and we should spend accordingly we should not be scared we should not be thinking that where the money would come tomorrow because even today doing all these things where we have we have we have created this psyche there is not helping us we are also 
not doing things to the extent we should be doing so my suggestion my message is very simple let's be human once again post this bad face and let us get together again let's live life again let's spend let's make our economy stronger let everybody benefit thank you very much